Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Bone, and I'm here to show you how to make some macros. In this episode, we'll be learning about the triggers. All of them. All right, let's get started. Make sure you have group selected, come in and make new macro. We're going to be learning about triggers, so we're going to call it triggers. And so you have a basic understanding of macros. They are actions, you know, that can be activated by a trigger. So let's create a action for our triggers to activate. And we'll be using the speak text. We'll be using our speak, speak text in our notification category. You can double click that, close that out, and we will be speaking. Boom. All right, let's go ahead, go ahead and select our first trigger. It's going to be a hot key trigger. And this is where you want to type in your shortcut. You just type in T for now. So whenever I hit T, boom it goes boom out. And it would make sense to include some modifiers so that our shortcut doesn't conflict with any of our other shortcuts. So you can go boom out, boom out. There we go. Let's go to our next trigger. We'll go into the typed string trigger better known as snippets so you can enter your little snippet here and it makes sense to go space space after that so when you type in you don't accidentally activate uh, a macro unintentionally so here we go bm Boom yeah all right head over to our next one and that's our application trigger so whenever you select your application let's go with quicktime so whenever quicktime activates Boom Oh yeah, boom oh. right. Let's over and make another one. Let's make another one. It's gonna be a login trigger, and I'm also gonna be talking about engine launch trigger, and I'll also be talking about the system wake trigger because they're pretty much the same, same idea here. But you just have to make sure you select. I go to keyboard maestro, go to preferences, and make sure you have the launch engine at login checked. So whenever you, you know, log in, whenever you log in, it'll activate and at engine launch. This is talking about our engine, our keyboard maestro engine here. So one of our keyboard maestro engine launches, it'll activate and at system wake. You know, pretty much the same idea whenever computer wakes from sleep, it activates. So let's move on to our time trigger here, our time trigger. This will activate at a certain time and it's nine, Let's make 9 20 p.m. It will activate because the time right now is 9 19. Wait for a little bit for that to activate. Let's set up our next trigger while we wait. Set it to, yeah, that should be good. So you can see here. There we go. Totally works. There we go. And it should be 920 soon enough. Well, I'll continue to wait. Let's move on to our next one. <laughs> there we go. So it's 920 and it's activated. Good. Let's move on to our next one. And that's gonna be our our macro palette trigger. So whenever you have this trigger on a macro, it will give you this sweet little floating, floating palette here. Hover on top of that. Over on top, click. There we go. I'm gonna move it out of the way here. Move it out of the way again. Uh, I said move it out of the way. There we go. Oh, sweet. Let's add our next one, and that's gonna be a status menu, status menu trigger, and that's where this will be located in our um, keyboard master engine menu. And we go. Let's go select our next one. It's gonna be public. Let me move it a little bit. Public web trigger. This is where we want to go back into our preferences again. And let's make sure we go to our web server and select web server enabled and select web browser access. Get this sweet connect button. And every action every uh, action that has our, our public web trigger will pop up in this little menu and you can execute it. Boom out. There we go. Let's go ahead and move on to our next one here. All right, what do we got next? We have our mounted volume trigger. So whenever your disk 
your USB or whatever. My passport here is unmounted. Let's eject it. There we go. So now let's move to our next one. And our next one is the USB device trigger. And this is for, this is intended for um, things that aren't considered volumes or, you know, USB drives. They're more like your devices, like your printer or scanners and such. I don't really use it that much, so I can't really recommend it that well. I can't really talk about it either since I don't use it. <laughs> All right, so uh, wireless, wireless network trigger. This is where you can set your wireless trigger here. Our wireless network is called awesome. So whenever it does disconnect, whenever it is disconnected, it'll activate. So let's go over here, disconnect. Boom, -o. boom, -o. there we go. Pretty sweet, make a new one. Let's go to our next one, which is a device trigger. All right, now um, device trigger is really intended for like um, your secondary input devices. For example, when I when I first got started in automation, I just had two keyboards: one where I used my standard, and the other one I would have my macros assigned to certain buttons. So, for example, if I have you know hit, hit shift on this keyboard, it will go. Ignore modifiers. Hey man. Boom out. There we go. Boom out. There we go. Just, uh, just needed to select ignore, ignore modifiers. There we go. Let's go ahead and move on to our next one. Uh, and that's going to be our MIDI trigger. And I also don't use this that much, so I can't talk about it that well. But uh, you know, give it a try if you have a MIDI controller. And anyways, um, hope you enjoyed watching. Gave you some ideas and. I'll see you next time. Boom out.